You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coon hounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Well, hey, everyone. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Today, we've got a special, uh, a couple special guests here. The topic I'd like to talk about today has to, has to do with our youth programs in the hunting beagle segment, First Strike. So uh, that's why I have Mr. Roy Swafford here. Thank you. You've been Glad participating, be and I see you're doing well in the standings this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jeff Davis tried knocking me out this past weekend. But I made sure that didn't happen, but yeah. Yeah, so uh, I've got Roy Swafford on, and we're going to talk about our youth programs, but our special guest today is uh, Mr. Brock Butler sitting back here. Glad to be here, ready for a good time. <laughs> Heck yeah, appreciate you both coming. So we're not just going to talk all about that, but we're going to uh, dig into a little bit of old stuff too. Roy's been around since day one, and so we're going to dig into that a little bit, see what we can get out of him, and then we'll, we're going to talk a whole lot about you too, Brock, so... So maybe to start with, Roy, let's start with you a little bit. Uh, you've been around since day one of our hunting beagle program, uh, but how did you even get started with beagles, and, and what did that look like back in those days? Oh, I got started in beagles with my dad. I mean, dad, my we grew up around the uh, coon clubs, and I was a coon club kid. We Dad was affiliated with Onstead Club, and then in Bellevue, Wolverine State Cooners Club, for years. Uh, mom run the kitchen, dad was the president and we spent virtually every weekend. So for me as a kid, it was all about coon dogs. Then about probably about Brock's age, uh, dad bought my first pair of beagles from a guy, Tom Dillard. Uh, I know Kellum will know him. Uh, yeah. And that's where I got my first pair of beagles and man, uh, the beagle thing just, I loved it. I, were, did you have, were they good, good beagles? Oh yeah. Have Real nice ones? pair yeah. of dogs. That's the foundation of the Mandy and Goldie were the foundation of Coldwater Kennels there with Don Sexton with the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With them first first champions and that kind of stuff, them were them, were them dogs there. And, uh, yeah, so that's where I started. And, and like I say, it yeah. took off from there. So you mentioned your mom and dad uh, running a couple of the coon clubs around Bellevue is one of them. And I've heard those stories a lot, you know, talking about your mom and dad up there and everything. But so did your dad mostly coon hunt or did he uh, run rabbit dogs mostly? Dad or run every, or? Yeah, dad dad coon hunted we in the winter time in the winter time we had beagles and when weather broke we were coon hunting he yeah. no focus with him was coon hunting yeah. i mean he he enjoyed he enjoyed the tree dog but he liked to he liked the coon or the beagles too so we always had a always had a beagle or two around yeah but the main focus was coon dog is that something you did just during hunting seasons or was that pretty much a yeah. year-round thing that you'd run no dogs? dad was we haunted did dad you? yeah we 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 shot stuff yeah. you know and that was big when come time to to run beagles we run beagles and yeah. if we got a pheasant along the way that was a bonus yeah. you know that was dad wasn't too particular he had actually one named bowser that he was a dandy he was a rabbit dog and he'd he'd bring you a bird around too and yeah you know shoot you know or today where you're really on him about that that wasn't <laughs> dad never worried too much about yeah that. so what what about your mom did she hunt with you some too no not dad, really? mom never hunted she was that typical yeah. gal back at home making sure you know there was always a ton of people around yeah and coming down dad when i was a kid i can remember frank frank giddings and my dad hunted a ton together yeah and i can remember being at frank's house and dad and or frank coming to our house him and kenny and you know that you know come down the basement stairs as a young kid like brock and there'd be People asleep all over the floor yeah. or they'd be down. So, yeah, Dad, coon hunting was the primary thing for us. I mean, then, like I say, the Beagles fell into it for me. Yeah, Brock, is that anything you've done much of at all, coon hunting at all? Not a lot of coon hunting. Yeah. Uh, my cousin owns 12, 13 walker dogs right now, and we'll go out maybe once a week. Yeah. But nothing I've really got yeah. into myself, just yeah. tagging along with yeah. him, so... Yeah, Roy, you, uh, talking about your dad, another thing I remember you talking about a lot is he pulled horses, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Did you get into some of that, yeah. too? Did yeah. You? yeah, that's where when I started really taking off with the Beagles, dad got away from his old coon dogs, got old, and uh, he didn't work to replace them or anything. But then he bought his first, went down to the Topeka sale down there and bought his first pair of Belgians and that we did not probably fool that he'd ever fooled with because he fooled with horses as yeah. a kid. But 
and he got his first pair of Colts and he broke them and he got to where he'd break them and yeah. sell them. And, and he got to pulling some with the pulling circuit around yeah. there. Some, and it was a, it was a good time. I'd work horses. I didn't mind working horses at the house and stuff. I didn't like, I wasn't the guy running the reins at the, at the fair when we'd go pull horses. Yeah. That's kind of an old thing anymore, you know, but several weeks ago I went up to the mech center there where they had a horse show and they also had a pulling contest. And there's actually a couple of coon hunters from the, one is Gerald Keegan lives not too far Very. from me. You know, he's a big horse puller. Yes. He was there. And there's another uh, another guy out of Kentucky. Chris Hatfield was there. He's one of the top pullers. I knew Gerald. Right Gerald yeah. Actually, Gerald and my dad were real good friends. Were they? Yeah. They, uh, dad sold Gerald a few horses here and yeah. there. And he always called him Little Keegan. Yeah. You know, always Little Keegan. Little Keegan was coming over for you, something. You mentioned uh, – you mentioned uh, – uh, Doggone it, the coon hunter, the Sackett Jr. up there. Frank Giddings, uh, Ben Crocker, he he has some pulling horses too. Yeah. And Frank and, uh, and Ben are good hunting buddies and right. stuff. Uh, so we kind of got uh, carried away here a little bit. But so how did you first, when did you first get involved with UKC? How did that all happen? I had helping with Todd Kellum. Uh, Kellum, actually, before Morgan took this job, him and Todd, they'd come down and they actually kind of told me about the pilot, what the plan was to kind of do, kind of you know, kind of base it a little bit off the, what they could from the coon hounds and kind of put it together and stuff. And I was in on some of the, you know, practice kind of hunt, so to speak. Yeah. And then Todd was like, Roy, you need to do this. You know, he come down and run with my original Ace and Jack dog back when they were young and uh, them were the dog. I don't know that they seen Mandy and Goldie, but they saw, definitely saw Ace and Jack yeah. a ton. And uh, Were you involved with the uh, the rules at all? Much? Not I, the original startup rules, no. See, I was surprised. We had that one of the uh, uh, first podcasts that we did, the one with Morgan and those, mm -hmm. we kind of did the history. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys uh, listened to that yeah. one or not, but... Uh, uh, like, uh, John Wick was one of them that was involved. He's an old coon hunter. And he was, That's where I learned. I did yeah. not know that until that pot, you know, yeah. I thought I knew everything about that, but that was part of it. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't either. Know. That's something you know, that I knew came Steve out. Fielder yeah. and Kellum and that were yeah. a, a big driving, but I didn't yeah. know where they reached yeah. out for resources on it. But yeah. I was definitely in on the implement, you know, how to imply them and that yeah. kind of stuff, how things got going. And then, you know, back then, Sex Don Sexton, Pat Tappenden, Doc Fisher, we kind of all just, they started in the hunts there, local group right there. And yeah. I think I sent you a picture there last yeah. night of them first eight champions. And yeah. we had four who, of them. Who were, who were some of those first ones? Oh, well, General Hacksaw was the first one. Don had the Prince dog. Pat had the Hank dog. I finished ace. And uh, Doc Fisher would have had the first ever champion female in the Coldwater Candy. Yeah. Hacksaw is a, a, a name that you still hear of every now and then. One of those old dogs. He was off of Indian Hills Major, I yeah. think, wasn't he? Yep. yep. Uh, yep. Reverend Sawyer hit him. He never run him after he made him Honey Beagle champion. Yeah. And I know I, that always kind of irked Don a little bit because he want because we finished him and then was in the champions. And at that point, we we're just you know make the first grand there. Hank made the first grand, and uh, we didn't. I was started on Jack, didn't run a so uh, Hank's first wins come solo, but. That that Coldwater Hank dog was as fine to this day one of the finest oh, suckers yeah. I've ever walked. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, going back to Hacksaw again, I was hunting with uh, just running dogs with Willis Yoder the other morning, and he was talking about that dog. Even some of the stuff, he, his some of his stuff goes back to that some of that same breeding. Uh, another one I think is like Sir Mongo. I think has old Hacksaw in his oh, really? three or four generation yeah. pedigree. I yep. think. Don't quote me on it, but I think some yeah. of those dogs go back to it. Yeah. yeah, Bill Bill Sawyer had a when he showed up, he was a guy that had. Uh, I never hunted much with the, the actual dog that finished their hacksaw, but I hunted with a female his called Angel, and she was the real deal. Yeah. I mean, old Bill was one of them old boys. He'd be just whittling on a stick, yeah. and she'd, he'd, she'd get out there and hit, and it'd be just strike, Angel. Yeah. And uh, Angel was a dandy. So you mentioned uh, you mentioned Coldwater Hank as being one of the better dogs. What were some of the other really good solid dogs back in those early days? Oh, back in the day, Dirty Dan Bo, Merle Spicers, yeah, comes to mind. Hank, uh, Tappenden had another one named Luke that I hunted a ton with. That was a real dandy. But them dogs back in the day, out out east, probably the most famous one I really liked the most was that Faust's Bud. Oh that, yeah, yeah. Well, Bo Faust had a was a dandy. That was a real deal hound. And the brush buster dog down Missouri way, yeah. Dave Henderson. Dave Henderson, That yeah. dog had a ton of hunt to yeah. him and nice hey, dog. Brock, have you ever heard of any of the, these now, old dogs? This is a little before my time. I've heard, stories, <laughs> I've heard stories here and there just between Roy and my dad just talking, but I 
Yeah. Not a lot. Don't know a lot about them, but. Yeah, your dad's been around forever too, so yeah. he remembers a lot of those oh, old dogs. Like I've that. heard stories, but yeah, I started messing around with his dad when he was about that young man's age. So right how there. how old were you, Roy, at that time? I was uh, well, I'd have been just a couple years. I graduated school and I got my first pair of beagles when I was in eighth grade. Was when Dad got me them from Tom Dillard, and I've had them ever since. But as far as the hunts and stuff, they started in '90, so I'd have been 22, 23 years old. Yeah, yeah. So you uh, you mentioned just briefly Ace. Yeah. Ace is the first dog that I remember you having at the trials. Oh, he was that. my he was the guy that he, he was, was a the, good one. He too. was the guy that put me on the map. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ace was a Ace was a dandy. I mean, he how was, did he stack up against some of those other neighborhood dogs? You oh, mentioned? he stacked up fine. Yeah. yeah, Ace. Well, you know, I I don't like to do, you know, but he's a he was a you know as nice. He competed against Bo and all them dogs. They'd go head to head a lot, you know. And, and you won a lot. With and him. he he won his share and yeah. got beat his share, yeah. you know, and and rightfully so. When you're yeah. hunting against that type of competition day in and day out, and they were nice, solid yeah. dogs. And that Ace was a rabbit dog. I mean, I know Kellum really liked him. He he was just. It didn't matter if you hunted. He was the type of dog. Didn't matter. Some dogs you have to hunt a ton to get yeah. their right potential out yeah. of them. Ace wasn't that type of dog. I could leave Ace set in the pen all week, grab him up. He's the same yeah. dog. If I hunted him five days, seven days a week, or once a week, yeah. Ace was the same dog. Yeah. So who were some of the biggest characters and good handlers back in those days? I've you've had all, I've heard oh, all gosh. kinds of stories. Saxton that. would be Don Saxton would come to mind as one of the biggest characters of the day back in the air. Merle. Merle was Merle Spicer. Another one was <laughs> Merle. That was, was kind of Matt Turner's mentor. Yeah. Back, mentor oh yeah. Back in yeah. The day. Oh, yeah. he got. He really Matt. Matt Merle really had his hands on Matt. Yeah, I met Matt when he was Matt start. Yeah, Matt started as a very very young, and he's not a real old guy now. But yeah, he started as a real young kid. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, Merle would have been a character. Dave Dave Henderson. Dave <laughs> Henderson was another one in that era down in there. Yeah. Was a was a real character of that that time frame yeah. you know and i'm sure there's other ones i'm forgetting you know and yeah uh, in that neck of the woods so were you a field rep for ukc pretty much right well, right out start? one of the i was the very first michigan well the first group of field reps yeah I, I was in that in that group of guys yeah so you had to be the youngest in the group probably by far oh yeah i was a young kid yeah, yeah i was the i was the guy with some experience but had you know a lot of youth to me yeah and, and that's where you know what similarities this this young man sitting right here, you know, uh, he's a 14 year old kid, but he's not, he doesn't conduct himself and does not run a scorecard like a 14 year old. Yeah. Kid. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and Brock, I promise you, we're going to get to your here in a little bit. But, <laughs> hey, I, I'm just listening, trying to keep all this in the back of my brain. <laughs> learn something today. So I thought yeah, what it was like way back when. Right? Yeah. And yeah. it was fun. I tell you, it, it, I enjoyed it. It was. Yeah, so 1992 came around. That was the UKC's first hunting beagle nationals, Holmesville, Ohio. Swafford's ace, Roy Swafford, were the first ever winners. Yeah, do you and remember? Do you remember much of that hunt? Uh, every inch of it. Every inch of it. Yeah. We, what was uh, What was that like to win that first one? Oh, like it that? was amazing out there. Well, you brought up characters in that cast right there: Chris Hackathorn, Owen Arnold from the West. you know, Arnold's little chip. Yeah, to go out there and and compete again. And to tell you the truth, I was I was loaded up. Uh, and I and this was character to Merle Spicer. Uh, I was actually I won my cast. I believe there was I think there was only four casts of grands at the very first nationals, and I won my cast. And Merle Spicer won it. I won my cast with three seventy five, and uh, with Ace Merle come in with four hundred, and the top score is what advanced on. I'm out there loading up. I'm headed home, you know. And uh, Doc Fisher comes running out. Uh, Roy, don't leave! Don't leave! Don't leave! You're you want it? I said I didn't win it. Merle's got more than I got. No, he just got scratched. Merle's cast got scratched for the wrong time. Oh boy! And the guy you were interviewing, Todd Morgan, is the guy. See, that back in the him. day, Brock, we used to have in the scorecards. Time used to be a huge issue. Yeah. We had the time in and I've time out that. blocks. Yeah. You know, so you had to write your time in. And if you called a timeout, you had to time out blocks. And at the end of the hunt, if that didn't all match, you were right to the T, you got tossed out. That happened numerous, yeah. lots of times. Some big scores yeah. got, and you know, and that was the, you know, that's where the big thing became of the handler's responsibility. You know, a lot of times that would get pointed out as the judge messed that up. Yeah. No, it wasn't the judge. You signed the card. Yeah. That's your responsibility. Yeah. Make sure the time and score is correct. That's yeah. the, 
biggest thing on there. So well, I ended we up We almost leaving. forget about that, yeah. you know, because, but that was a big well, deal. So that's that. what advanced, but literally that's what advanced ACE yeah. into the finals. And man, mm. I, you know, I felt it kind of, you know, you don't want to win a big hunt and have the little gray area yeah. above you there, you know, but this was the type of person Merle was. Merle come up to me, big old smile on his face. And man, I'm like, Merle, this is awful. I don't want to go now. You beat me. He goes, I didn't beat you. I screwed up. He yeah. said, now go win the thing. Yeah. And that was the exact words to me. Yeah. He said, don't, don't be doing that. You go win it. Yeah. And then Ace went out there and did his job and, and won it. And if it would be like, say Larry Elliott got up in there, I actually, I'll pull that old, I got the original old better Beagley magazine at that article that Steve wrote up on it Yeah, about Larry going up in there and scoring a line. Cause I, I needed that at the end. And, uh, at, at Ace pulled the line out at the end yeah. and won the hunt and oh what a feeling yeah. yeah to win the first ever big big UKC hunt that yeah. was a, so did you uh, breed Ace much or not you know really? I did but didn't you know I never I never been one that run a bunch of stud ads or push dogs but uh I got a lot of calls a lot yeah. of a lot of and he bred his fair share mm -hmm. you know and got a lot of got some nice stuff yeah. out of him and that kind of stuff yeah. but like I say I I was more hunting that kind of stuff wasn't into yeah. raising pups yeah. and that kind of stuff yeah. with him because so I, well, I won a I won the nationals with him. The ninety five. That's what again I was. That's what was going to be in my next thing. Ninety five. Harry came along. Won oh, it yeah. again with Harry. Yeah, Harry was out of the the probably the at that time frame probably one of the most talked about crosses happened was with Daly's Abbey. Yeah, Barney Daly bred Dace. She was a yes. Yep. I judged I judged Abby a lot and uh, seen Abby a bunch and uh, so they bred Dace and I got Harry. Now, Harry was probably the most frustrating start. I mean, he literally probably hadn't been running a rabbit six months yeah. before. I had a heck of a time getting him started yeah. and getting him to going. But once he clicked and started going, he he was a dandy. And yeah. as he got older, he became a un, just a solid rabbit dog. Well, his dad hunted Harry a lot. I mean, and when Harry, after Harry won nationals, Harry ended up being sterile. And so I never got a pup directly out of Harry, yeah. but I had Harry floating around there and it seemed like Harry was the neighborhood dog. Rob Maynard, Rob Maynard took him a lot. Uh, you know, your dad, uh, Nate, you had him a lot. Would everybody come and take Harry, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Brock, uh, there's, I got a list of names right here. Roy Swafford, Jerry Scott, Dan Mazalik, Danny Dugan, Bill McFarland, uh, Brian Mead, Dave Hummel. What do you think they all have in common? Oh, boy. Well, I've hunted with all of them, and I know all of them. Uh, they were all two-time winners of the Nationals. Ah. It's a pretty pretty elite group right there, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, all of those were uh, two-time winners. Jerry Scott with Windstorm and uh, Happy, 02, and then again in 18. And then here's here's an interesting one. Dan Mazalik, Bo of Touchstone. There's only two dogs to ever win the Nationals twice, and that was Bo of Touchstone. And you'll hear a lot of the old guys talk about that dog. That's that's probably the dog I've heard my dad talk about one of, if not the most, you know, yeah. just sitting at the house asking him questions, you yeah. know, what was some of the better dogs back when you ran when yeah. you were my age? And yeah. I hear that name come up a lot. So he wanted in 03 and then again in 05, Bo did. And then uh, Danny Dugan with Mystery Man, old uh, Manny, 04 and 06. And then Bill McFarlane wanted, those were the only two dogs to, to win the Nationals twice, you know. Yeah. Uh, then uh, McFarlane won it with Star and Princess, and then Brian Mead won it with Dez and Booty, and Hummel with Beach and Regis, and then but then uh, Mazalik and uh, Brian Mead actually won it three times. You know Mazalik twice with Touchstone, and then that Shiloh dog. What uh, was that? Maybe three, four years ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, yeah, not very long ago. And then Mead with Dez and Booty, and then he was also co-owner on Paris with Alan Railing. So. Technically, those two guys won it three times. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. But yeah, let's uh, let's move on here. Uh, uh, world Hunt, another big winner for you, Chubby Checkers. Oh boy, talk about that. A little oh, bit. the World Hunt was this guy's white lion. You know, the first three I made the finals of the very first first one. Oh, two it was two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand two. A uh, dog named Taylor's Black Magic Ace come around from out of Ace and a uh, female Leroy Taylor's out in Wisconsin. And uh, I went and got Ace and Ace, he was in the finals in the one in the same year. He was in the finals of Nationals and in the finals of the World Hunt. In the grand final, when they first started in the National Grand, I made the finals with him in that. Uh, got beat by the Rose female of Jason Vandergriff's and then 
he got beat when both year he made the finals two years in a row of world hunt and uh i had it set right up i i did fourth third and then the next year i made it with another feed uh, dog out of ace named ginger uh made it to there and uh got beat second by winnie oh winnie said it in a two dog final I, I took second there so fourth third second and then there was a dry spell i didn't hunt a lot of ukc there for a bit and kind of got into chubby and uh, got into the branco line of dogs with dugan and and uh then uh chubby checker come along and just so happened that was the dog that got it done for me i remember that was in lagrange indiana is where the world hunt was there and and you kind of rolling through those first several rounds or whatever i could i remember i could tell you had a lot of confidence in that dog chubby was the type of dog that made you want to go to a trial i mean he made his breaks you didn't have to worry about this needed to be right this needed that chubby if anything regret that i have is i didn't keep him out there longer yeah. he was he was put on this earth to run in a ukc format he, yeah actually in akc he he would get himself out of pocket hunting because he was a hard hunting hound and he'd get himself out of pocket in the akc they kind of keep more not kind of they do they keep yeah. him tight to you and it's mm. more judged off you know their style of running hound and uh he finished in that too but uh that would get him in trouble because if you got in thin rabbits. Yeah. Chubby was going to go find a rabbit. Yeah. And uh, he ended up, that was his strong point. I mean, he was a footy dog, but I wanted it to be a jump contest. It was a good morning. Good morning oh, for yeah. hunting on. I remember that Sunday morning we did the final four interview. I remember you, you sitting there and, and, and I think he was probably kind of the dog to beat there. Oh, um, <laughs> yes and no. You know, your I, dad I was in it too. It. Nate, yeah. Nate was in it too. Yeah, I forget Pete. what dog. Pete. Pete. Pete, Pete yeah. Mark Murray and then Brandon Vance there with a banana. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I had a ton of confidence in him. Um, I, I just, he was just rolling. I knew, I knew he was going to, something was going to have to beat him. Uh, he, yeah. he was rolling. And the longer it went, that, that cast didn't start out real good. It started out real good for me. I got a line by myself and everybody thought I had it in the bag. And then things started to fall apart for me a little bit, but that last half hour, he, yeah. he put on a he put on, and that's what I wanted. I needed uh, Donnie Ant was one of the judges, and I told Donnie, I just need some running. I need some bigger. Run I I get into some running. He he'll be fine. And, and we he, got and he in, did. We got into some running, and he looked. Sharp there was a lot of him. talk about it afterwards. I remember. He well, was that was pretty, a thousand point cast. Yeah. yeah, highest scoring cast to date, yeah. I think, at the world. I believe finals. so. I kept track of. Yeah, it. yeah, that yeah, was a good cast. And one of the funniest thing there is walking in is. The old master himself, Pruny, old Dale comes up to me. He doesn't congratulate me or something. He looks at me and says, about time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was yeah. a, you know, to end to win it, partnered up with a, you know, D Denny has been, you know, Denny's one of my super friends, super. There's just guys that you meet in this that have stick with you and that kind of stuff. And Denny's just a super yeah. class act. And to be partnered up with him, and I, I can't even really call it partnered because the man gave me the yeah. You know, uh, he gave him to me. And, uh, so that was a, yeah. that was a partnership made in time. You know, I could, yeah. kids were busy playing ball right then. He'd go down to Denny's and Denny would, you know, Denny's got the, basically the minor league farm system, yeah. the Beagles system yeah. set up down there. He'd pour it on him and then I'd get him up there and yeah. go to hunting him. And so I, I had to, at the, in that era, things were perfect for yeah. in Roy's world in Beagling. Yeah, I remember. Uh, then there was also several other good. You bred him a few times. You didn't breed him a whole lot. A whole no, lot, not a ton. I mean, he finished. He was a world champion. He finished an AKC field champion. And there was enough of him bred out of him. But, I, you know, I'm as critical as anybody. on my own stuff. Yeah. Uh, I never seen anything out of Chubby that was Chubby yeah. by any means. Yeah. And that's no knock on him, or it is a knock on him. I just uh, didn't see the dogs out of him yeah. like him. Now, don't, not to say that there wasn't yeah. nice, nice dogs out of him, because there was. Yeah, there was. There was Cedar Creek was, Rocky was yeah, one of them. exactly. Yep. There was a there was some freaks, and I had a dog that I finished. I didn't run him much in any, hardly in UKC. Well, he, he may champion that checkers dog. Yeah. I called him Kid Checkers. Yeah. And uh, he he was a, that was a nice dog. Yeah. And there, like I say, there's, not to say, you know, there's, there's going to be guys that, at one point, he was on the top producers yeah. list. So, yeah. It's but when you watched him and watched anything out of him, they they weren't chubby. Yeah. So, um, what were uh, obviously the nationals there? How how did the nationals win com compared to the world win? The world win was that was my, it for oh, you. Oh man, that was uh, I didn't think I could win it. Yeah. I mean, when you lose it three times in a row, you I was so disgusted. You Losing know. some confidence for <laughs> you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you lose confidence every time. You know, yeah. it's like what can go wrong, and yeah. I guarantee you. 
that night when I went home, knowing I had to hunt that, I wanted, I would have loved to hunt that finals that day because that night I couldn't hardly. You can't sleep. Like, what's gonna go wrong? To it, it doesn't every. Plus, I got Denny calling me, ragging me, like, "How are you gonna screw this one up?" Yeah. And that, that just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brock, you probably you've probably had those same feelings too. Yeah. Already, it's just yeah. things just don't line up. Do all your homework; everything is good. Just, it just you got to have some breaks along. The way. Oh, you got to have a nice dog. And you got to yeah. have some breaks. They got to yeah. you. Anybody that says they don't, they're lying. They got to. Yeah. They got to. You got to have the breaks fall yeah. in there to you. What are some of your fondest memories of the old days? Oh, I know the first, the nationals is always a great one to, well, the first national, you know, them type of that kind of stuff. And just, I guess my memory, what memories now is, is today to now stuff is creates a memory for me to see how things were then, you know, the clubs, you know, events were big, you know, as far as at entries, you know, the Michigan state and stuff that used to be a real big, you know, there would be close to hundred and some dogs the first day and, 60 70 so the numbers were humongous and uh so that going just the people and you know just all of the above wraps it up but to compare now to then it it was just it's just two different time frames. yeah i remember you from back in those days and honestly you know we see brock and some of these other younger guys now and hey I see a whole lot of Brock or see a whole lot of you and, and Brock, you know, ate up with it, you know, and oh, yeah. loving to compete, you know, and getting out there and just hunting dogs and just. Yeah. And that's where, you know, things, you'll hear people say that, you know, that it, it it's not what it was. It's not what it is. Well, what's not what it was yeah. is Roy. Yeah. Roy's not the same guy that he was yeah. back then. I, you know, and, and like say, I, I, and I, and I paid the price in some areas of that yeah. too, you know, if, if you ask my wife, uh, there was play, you know, I'd get home for work. I'd change my clothes and go run dogs, go run dogs. That's all I did. So I owe a ton to her. I mean, when the kids were, I look back at some of the pictures and stuff of the kids were little thinking, Oh wow. I missed out because yeah. I was so focused on the dogs and, yeah. and she, and the, on the same token, she wouldn't have had it. Anymore. Yeah. I mean, she supported me all through it, you know, me and Don and Pat and, them guys tapping and we was running around hunting and we weren't, if we weren't at a trial, we had dogs on the ground, yeah. you know? And, and that was, my focus was dogs. I didn't deer hunt. I didn't turkey hunt. I didn't do any of the, my focus was beagles. Yeah. And I, I run a beagle every day. I mean, if I wasn't doing something, I had a dog turned loose. That's what's changed for Roy. <laughs> Roy might not have, he's not so dedicated to get one yeah. turn loose. <laughs> We all get, we're all getting older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. I'd rather sit here and reminisce than actually, yeah. I was not the guy yeah. to reminisce then. I had, yeah. I had things turned loose. Yeah. I didn't have really good kennels. I, yeah. My theory was if I had a good kennel, I wasn't doing my job. He yeah. wasn't supposed to be there in there anyway. Well, here in a minute, we're going to turn to Brock here, but you know, that's just, you know, hearing Roy talk about some of the good old days, you know, Rock, or Brock, 25, 30 years from now, you're going to be talking about the good old days and your good yeah. old days are probably going to be talking about chief and the mongos and some of those dogs I that you drew you know that's yeah that's the way it works so. exactly well brock we've heard roy talking about some of uh his experiences back in the day so uh, we want to hear some of yours too you're uh what are you 14 14 14 now, yeah. now yeah so uh your dad is Nate Butler, live here in Michigan, right? Yep, born and raised. He's and then you here. have what, one brother? One brother, yep. His name's Luke. He uh, he kind of got out of the dogs and stuff when he was about my age, but I remember little seven, eight-year-old me, you know, looking up to him. We'd go deer hunting or rabbit running yeah. or whatever. He's kind of got out of it now, but yeah. now it's just a me and my dad show. But <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, you, you're also into sports in school, right? Yep, I play uh, basketball and baseball. Baseball's kind of my baby other than running dogs but i play basketball too so. yeah pretty much you just like all kinds of sports mm -hmm. like a, like the all-american kid aren't yeah you? i guess yeah what uh is uh baseball some of your your favorite yeah sports in there ain't school? much better than i'm gonna be in high school next year so i'll be in high school ball but my dad's coached a travel team ever since we were eight nine years old and i've had some of my funnest memories out on a baseball diamond with him over at third base yelling or being yeah. happy or whatever yeah, yeah. And you've had some good teams too, haven't yeah, you, in the last we went, several years? We went 31 and 8 this year. So Holy cow, that's good. good. Yep. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what other hobbies other than that? You said you deer hunt a little bit, right? Yep. A lot of deer hunting, turkey hunting, squirrel hunting. Uh, my grandpa got me into 
a lot of that between don't, my dad. Don't and my forget grandpa. the squirrel hunt. I came up and hunted with yep. you a little bit last oh, year. Got to see old Winston go last year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Roy wants that dog. Yeah, Roy, or you might get to hunt with well, him a whole lot. Get him up there. That's that's kind of a chatter between uh, me and him and his dad right now. Is yeah, we're, we're, there's going to be a squirrel dog in our future. There's well, no question of that. You'd probably hunt him a whole lot more than I do. So <laughs> hey, he's he's in the kennel getting fat. So come and have at him. Yeah. So, uh, but let's talk about, uh, let's talk about beagles. What are some of your first memories of hunting with beagles? And who were those dogs? Um, I remember when I was six, seven, eight years old, uh, my dad had the Pete dog and the fire dog. Uh, I don't remember a lot about them dogs. I remember every once in a while going, running them on hair and stuff. Uh, but the first one that I can really remember running was a dog named Butler's Running Rebel. He'd be seven years old now. Yeah, but uh, he was kind of the first one that I really remember. You know, I shot my first rabbit over him and oh, yeah. all that fun stuff. Yeah, so. remember what gun you used? I was using a little twenty gauge. I believe it was uh, my grandpa's gun. I think I used that yeah. gun and got it. Yeah. So, um, do you own any of your own dogs, or you own a couple? Co-own them with your dad? Yeah, a couple of me them, and my right? dad own them, and. Even though Roy says his name ain't on the little sheet of paper, he does a lot with them. <laughs> yeah. So he's in there too. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we got five of them at the house right now that we both, you know, we'll feed them every other night, yeah. whatever. So I remember seeing your dad at a lot of hunts back in the back in the day, and then you kind of didn't see him for a little while. Then all of a sudden, here he shows up again. But he had you with him. Yeah. What made you want to compete? Uh. Just sports, and my dad's always had a beagle, you know, ever since I was little. And we got them pine trees behind our house, and we'd go out there at night, and he'd tell me, hey, come feed dogs with me. And I'd see him put a little collar on one and turn them loose back in them pine trees. And I was, oh, this is pretty cool. And then, you know, I got to start seeing Roy and everybody and started to learn about the UKC and the rules and everything and yeah. just kind of took off from there. What isn't there just a – there's just something fun and addicting about – being a dog handler team, it's a team thing. Really, oh, you yeah. got to call your dog. You got to yes, know your dog. But there's just something that is just. Uh, it, it was always was for me, anyways. Yep. Different. I I think different than going and putting your dog in a trial where the judges run with them, you know, or whatever. There's just something about it. It was always the same way with goonons for me as well. Just handling, you know, calling your dog and knowing every bark it makes. And it's also uh, speaking on that note. It's also fun, you know. You got five minutes left and you know you're down five points you know and you think your dog's up on the pole running the front you know and you're oh man you got your eyes exciting, peeled looking for this it? rabbit and you just can't see him yeah. and then you know 30 seconds you see him and catch a break and you win or you yeah. don't yeah. and that's just the works up and both down, ways sometimes you know, just like a basketball or baseball game you know you'd be down one run going into the bottom of the ninth and are you going to get a run or yeah. are you going to hit a walk-off home run what are you going to do so yeah. so what was the first dog that you actually competed with uh, a dog you know, called Butler's Tank. He's still around. He's almost six years old now. He'll be six next month. But he was the one that got me into the trials and I started out with. Yeah, see, he's talking back in the day here, but that's like three or four years <laughs> that's ago. That's the day to <laughs> him. That's, that's yeah, the day. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's, uh, that's so cool. Do you remember that first? Do you remember your first win with the dog? Yeah. Uh, my first UKC win was at the 2017 World Hunt in West Virginia. Uh, that was your first cast win? Yeah, first got. ever really, cast win. world hunt. And it was with a litter mate to the tank dog. His name's Trooper. And uh, we run won the first round at the world hunt and uh, won youth handler that year. And that was the year Roy was uh, master of hounds up there. And we got to hug that it was, out after I got the trophy yeah. and everything. So. Really? That was your first That was your yep. first hunt first, right there? I guess first I would have thought cast you were win. hunting before that already. And that's probably longer yeah. than I think Probably was is. hunting some there, but that yeah. was yeah. his first cw where yeah. he got it done but yeah and i've always commended you on how we had them kids set up to come yeah. to the where you know he had the final 10 and he'd been knocked out but yet we gave him his youth handler and he'd come down through there and to see those and we didn't even now didn't even talk to them. i remember that yeah, we, we didn't even talk in. to the handlers about high five and brock but to see them all them guys yeah. starting out, i believe with jeff stacy reaching out yeah. there to freaking high five him down through there and everybody doing that oh man remember it like it was yesterday <laughs> jeff stacy trevor uh i think cody rucker jason vandergriff yep. were up there and that was in the semifinals it was, was yeah when we were what down was that feeling like well at first i didn't know i won it 
we were getting kind of like what Roy's talking about earlier. We were kind of packing up, didn't know nothing was coming. And then I hear my dad say, hey, let's go to Clubhouse real quick because, you know, he found out. <laughs> and I went up there not really expecting much. And then I hear Roy up there, your 2017 youth handler for the World Hunt, Brock Butler, and walked up there. And that was the one that kind of, all right, this is something I want to do yeah. for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you think Do you think that hunt is what just, uh, it was? that was just it for you? Yeah, I mean, I remember the ride home. Or even if you would have lost, you'd have still, you still yeah, had the bug. I remember right? the ride home telling my dad, you know, because that was really, I had hunted, watched a few casts, but that was kind of the first time I ever handled yeah. a dog and hunted with great people. First, your, my second ever cast ever, I got to hunt with the legendary Kevin Weaver. So, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a fun one. So, But I knew right off that world hunt that it was something I was going to want to do for a while. Yeah, heck yeah. How awesome is that? That, so, was a, that was a great, yeah. that whole event was one of the, yeah. of all the world hunts ever. That yeah. was one of my, what the club effort behind that, the whole, the, the way that event, you and I talked about the way that started off with the feed and the dinner on Thursday, the, night. Yeah, Thursday night there, all the camaraderie between set, everybody and set the atmosphere oh right my on gosh, Thursday. I've, already I've commended that club. So, you know, Fred Hawkins was big into that. Steve Moore, yep. Jay Moore, that group of guys. And I'm, Definitely leaving out a ton, but yeah. you know we that was just one of the best. And I believe we had old Clyde Hanning come back yeah. and judge the show. And yeah. oh man, what a old what Hollywood a, Hanning! Old Hollywood Hanning. Hanning. Yeah, yep. I nicknamed him Hollywood, but uh, <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> that was a damn. That was one of the best world hunts ever. Yeah, that was that was really good. It yeah. was sure was. So uh, Brock, uh, there's we have youth programs. The NHBA has their youth series, and we have our first strike series. And you've won how many? How many wins do you have? I've, Overall youth series wins do you have? I've won the first strike in the NHBA three years in a row now, so six total between the two. So, so nineteen, twenty, <laughs> twenty-one. I've won them yeah. both all three years. Yeah. What What do you feel like you've learned uh, from those programs? Does it has it helped young kids like you? You feel like yeah. I remember the first year ever. You know, Braden Weaver was my biggest competition that yeah, year. And yeah. I got to meet him and his dad pretty well, and we'd go to a hunt and see them too. You know, oh, Braden just got a win. You know, I better step up my game or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So that was a pretty fun year, just seeing what it was all about. And ended do you up remember at the it. World Hunt in Missouri, nineteen? Yep. Nineteen. It was you and Braden were both there. And, and I we did, did a little, that interview yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I actually yeah. seen the video on that not too long ago. It yeah. popped up in my phone and I watched it. And gosh, you guys were just what were you, ten or eleven? I would have been I would have been ten, I think he'd have been no, I'd have been eleven, he'd have been ten. Yeah. Yeah, that's just amazing. So so yeah, so explain to uh the listeners um how the NHBA's youth series works. So the NHBA youth series, it's UKC rules still and everything. You just NHBA sponsors the event or you know they're in on the event so you know you got your world hunt your nationals and then like last weekend we had one at our club that was a double point event so that's just the nhba sectionals where yep. you can super, get yep, yep. yep. and okay. we had a super sectional there which is a double point so you know if, if i was to go out and get a cast win i'd get four points instead of two and then you just tally up your points there at the end of the year and which they keep it updated they try to do a monthly update so you kind of know where you're sitting yeah. and that's also been fun too you know you get, hey, I'm only two points ahead of so and so this week. You know, maybe if I have a good weekend, I'll be in first next week. You know, so so who who are, who are some of the other kids that are in the in the running right now? Uh, right now, Coy Jarrett. He's been in it the last few years. He's always a competitor. Yep, from uh, North Carolina. Yep. Mm-hmm. You got the Eli Watson, Izzy, uh, Achilles Indiana, is in Indiana it now. Kids. Remember the Indiana Izzy kids, not, Kelly Morrison. Yep. yep. I remember the first year I was in it. Uh, Josie Holmes, she was a real tough competitor that yeah. year. She oh boy. used to run Carolinas. That. Yeah. But this year you're you know, you got, like I said, them three Indiana and then uh Coy Jarrett there. Them are kind of the top five that are up there in the points right now. Yeah. It just amazes me how oh, that name Josie Holmes. Josie Holmes and the first strike series are just Oh yeah. I remember remember working here doing the first strike series, seeing Josie's point status and 
where she would be in the hunts. And it's like, holy cow, this kid's at a <laughs> hunt know. every week. Because I remember Jeff laughing that like, heck, i got to get more dogs where these kids finish off a dog. <laughs> I don't have nothing to hunt. You know? know? Yeah. So it's a, yeah, Josie Holmes is a huge name yeah. through the first. And to see where, you know, she's a young lady, young adult now, to see where you watch that come through the first still, strike series still has hounds and, and got, still has hounds got a good and job that, you know everything. that kind of thing it's yeah. uh, so to see that and to see brock following in that kind of you know legend you know in the first strike you know one of the icons of the first strike series yeah. i mean she's very much the first lady of the first strike mm -hmm. series yeah so we were talking about the nhba so you can earn the youth points at their sectionals yep any one of their sectionals and where can kids go find those sectional hunts on their uh, website? Yeah, they have you get on the on UKC website? website or the NHBA website, and you can see your UKC, it'll usually in the description have, you know, this is an NHBA section or whatever. Right. But on the NHBA Facebook page, you can see where all the sectionals are and the dates and everything. And if they're bonus points, you know, yeah. bonus points obviously are bonus point events. So you get double whatever you normally would get. So them, yeah. are, them are ones, you know, in the series you want to hit. So, like, how many of the NHBA sectionals have you? hit on average a year like last year let's say 21 how many did you go to you know <laughs> keep I count. Don't, no i don't keep count but i'm sure we went to if they had 40 i'm sure we were at 20 25 of them that first oh, yeah. year i ran it real hard we were every weekend we were yeah. out you know we've kind of started to lay back now that i'm into middle school and going to be in high school sports yeah. and everything but we're uh we're at quite a few of them for sure yeah, so, okay, so that was NHBA's youth series, and UKC also has their first strike series, yep. which is a little different. You can earn points at any event any there. Any hunt, yep. yep. Explain a little bit to... Uh, uh, it's the same deal. Uh, you get, it's five points for entering your dog, you know, going out on a cast, and then double if you get a cast win. Ten points, and then, another ten points yep. if you win your and cast. And then for then, for the first strike series, you can also get your bench show points. So it's important that you show your dog and, you know, get to not only do you need to know about the hunt but the show comes in big there too yeah. because you can get points for each yeah we kind of set that up to uh it's hard for a kid to win the series just doing one or well, the other yeah. just showing or Absolutely. just hunting very you can't difficult. compete with the kids that are doing both. I, know, I know since i've been in it it's never been done you yeah. know and even looking back before i was running it hard there was everybody you know if they had 300 hunt points they had you know yeah. 150 200 show points yeah and that's what's tough for the kids, like in our Midwest, you're in especially Michigan, Indiana, the shows aren't a, you know, a lot of clubs doesn't schedule them, but you look in Jeff's, you know, the North Carolina, the Virginia's, Newby, that area down there, they do shows all the time. So those kids down there, they might not have done well in the hunt. They only got five points. And the next thing you know, they got yeah. 15, 30 points yeah, running here out of the show. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you'll see that balance. And all of a sudden this kid's coming out of nowhere yeah. because he's getting getting the show points, yeah. you know. Right now I just uh, copied off of our website what the current standings are as of uh, August 1st here. There's a familiar name at the top again, Brock Butler, 290 points. But you mentioned Coy Jarrett. He's sitting right behind you with 230. Yeah. That's just a boatload of points. Yeah. And then Eli Watson, you men mentioned him. He's up there in third right now. Then uh, Brody Neff, he's a kid out of uh, Missouri. Missouri, Missouri yep. uh, younger kid. Yep, he's right in the running. See, I think, uh, I don't know, it was Garrett Cunningham. I think he's going to age out this year. He will, but, yep. Yeah, Nathan Phillips. I don't know Nathan Phillips. Where I don't know he's him one of the, He's a Pennsylvania with okay. Jake Cumberlidge yes. and yep, around the Waynesburg him. Club. Yeah. Yep. And he's got a hundred. He and Brody Neff are both tied right mm -hmm. now in the in the senior division. It, it's still anybody's ball game. It's yeah. it's pretty early, you know. There's, yeah. Then you mentioned left. Izzy Izzy Note, uh, yep. young lady from Indiana. Indiana. Yep. yep. And then Connor Meads up there. He's from West Virginia. So yeah. Uh, but it's that list. I remember uh, when we first started this, we didn't see very many kids. They had a couple kids that would compete. But after we started this, just how that list grew, like a hundred and twenty-five or so different kids. That are now competing, crazy. That, that's, and that's that's where good. It's at. That's good. Has to be, good you know. Uh, yeah. Talking with uh, with Chuck Prather of Plum Creek when mm -hmm. I talked to him about sponsoring some of the uh, youth series and stuff, it, he said one of the smartest things you'll ever hear is, "I love to help out in those programs. That's my customer mm -hmm. going forward. As my business for my long term for my business is going to rely 
on that U series, that that young man having dogs, dog supply, yeah. hunt supply. He said, my dog supply business is solely focused. So he's a big one to help uh, in uh, youth. And you, you'll yeah. see the plum with a lot of the youth yeah. stuff in different formats and stuff like that. And Chuck's a shrewd businessman. He knows that yeah. putting his name into those kids mm -hmm. gets their business, you know? Yeah. So Brock, let's uh, change gears a little bit. So uh, hunting during the week and prepping dogs for a hunt. What does that look like? How do you prep or how do you prepare for a hunt? Uh, for us, we we believe we're pretty big believers of the solo technique, which is running a dog by themselves during the week. But like Roy was saying earlier, every dog's kind of different. You know, he had the ace dog that you could run whenever and he looked the same. You know, we got two dogs at the house that we run in the hunts. Tank and Trooper, the two litter mates. You can turn them loose once a month and they'll look the same. Once a year, they'll look the same, or you can turn them loose every day. They'll do the same. Got to know your dog. Yeah, and then we got the ranger dog and the rebel dog. Them two you had to keep ran up pretty good. Uh, but we do a lot of solo, you know, the week before a hunt just to make sure they ain't getting too other dog reliant and, you know, yeah, no bad habits are forming. They got to go do it by themselves. On average, how, on average week in a, in a month, how many days a week do you think you would run dogs? Uh this time of year, it's a little slower just because of the sure. weather and stuff. But on average through the year, three, four, five times a week yeah. easily. And we're recording this here about the 10th of August. so Yeah, right now we're a little slower just because it hit 90 last weekend when we oh, had man. our trial. Uh, but we still, you know, wake up 5, 30, 6 o'clock, go run. Yeah. So we're still three times a week for sure, four, you know. Yeah. But in the winter months, you could see seven times a week for sure. You know, I've had plenty of them yeah. six times. So, do you ever have a dog when you're getting them ready and you're just you're just kind of on a roll where you where you just have that good feeling about man, this dog is on a roll, and you just you just have that good feeling about this. The dog's operating, and this is my weekend. And sometimes wins come easier than other other times. Yeah, I mean. Nobody wants to go out and their their dog not to jump a rabbit for three days and then they want to run them to a hunt, you know. Uh, it's a, it's good to see, you know, your dog goes out and looks real good during the week. That gives you that extra, extra confidence that you know your dog's going to do its job. You know, you got to do your job as a handler and all should go well. <laughs> yeah. So what is it that you like best about competing? Is it is it the handling the dog's part? Is it the training, getting ready for them? Is it the people or is it? Is it just uh, because it's a competition, or is it a, is it a compilation? A little of, bit of everything. I yeah. mean, I like raising the raising the dogs. You know, we've had them once since they we we were coming home from a football game and uh, went to feed them that night, and you know, our cat dog had her pups, and I got to watch them dogs from when they were just born to now, and you know, seeing them progress over that time and seeing them win at these trials and stuff, and the competition's always good too. You know, like I said, I'm a big baseball basketball fan yeah you know it competing is always something i've loved to do you yeah. know i know me and my brother we just last night we probably played 30 ping pong games in my basement <laughs> smack, <laughs> smack talking and every other thing you know because we just we I'm both sure. love yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> we both love to compete and we want to beat each other you yeah. Know? yeah yeah um what uh what what are some some of the most important things for kids in your opinion for kids to to learn or uh to do uh, to get ready for a hunt, or if this is something they would want to do, what 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 is some of the most important things for them to do? You got to know your dog. I mean, for sure, you learn your dog. Yeah, you got to learn your dog. Uh, one big thing, and I know this from the hard way. You know, don't go to you know your local event and take it any differently than the world hunt. You know, if you you know if if you're gonna strike your dog on one bark at a local club, don't change nothing up at the world hunt. Yeah, you know, or don't let the don't let the big stage you know get to you, even though I know it's hard sometimes. Yeah. But uh, don't just, change things yeah, up. Don't change things up just because of what hunt it is, or yeah. you know, you draw out with last year's world champion, you're nervous or whatever. Yeah. You just gotta call your dog as what it does, and you know, if you've got them trained up and know your dog, yeah, that's all so, you can ask for. Yeah. So you mentioned you you mentioned nerves. I made a little uh. uh uh, question here that I wanted to ask you do you still get nervous and have butterflies yeah I mean at the at the bigger events you know when you've got a nice dog you know obviously you really want to win because that's the big one to get your name out there you I've, know but, I've always I've always felt like man it it if you don't get a, at least a little bit of a, a little bit of nerve why you probably just don't 
have, yeah, have it in you. Then you lost really. it, right? Yeah, you, yeah you, exactly. You do you still get that? Right? Oh, heck yeah. yeah. You don't go to lose. I do, you know, and that's where I don't, and I've always tell everybody that, that for the, I don't blame anybody you want to, you don't work hard. This, this young man doesn't get where he's talking about getting up four or five days a week. Yeah. He's not doing that to go lose. Yeah. You know, you're all, oh, I'm here to have fun and everything else. Yeah. That's, that's all fine and dandy, but I come out here to win too, yeah. but you got to win the right way. Yeah. And that's where, I mean, I, my big thing, and he knows I kind of harp on him maybe too much about this, is winning the right – you you can build a reputation, and it takes you years to build it, but in a short order, you can lose it. And you don't yeah. want to be the guy yeah. that wins everything that nobody cares. Yeah. Gotta because be you stepped on too. everybody, and yep. you got to make sure you win that respect. Yeah. And that's where, I mean – uh, I'm not partial to this kid, but he's doing it the right yeah. way. Yeah. He knows the rules. He implements the rules. I mean, there's a big group of guys right now, our Marco Polo group, that I'm sorry <laughs> you got denied <laughs> to our group. But, hey, we, we won't even get into that. It's a whole other podcast. But, hey, uh, it's we forget that this young man's only 14. You yeah. know, the way he applies the rules. Yep. And that is, and is think, good. trying to think back when I was 14, you know, I was really just really getting into it then. You know, wasn't competing, but – Really getting mm-hmm. into hunting and getting to know dogs, you know. But uh, yeah, so you mentioned nerves. What what advice would you give other kids to how to kind of control their nerves a little bit? Do you is there anything that you do, or you just probably gets easier? Yep, you know, it gets easier over time. But you just got to look at it as any other hunt, kind of like I was saying. The difference between a world hunt and you know your local club hunt, you can't yeah. you can't take any try not to take anything any different you know you got to go out there with the mindset that yeah you know this is just another hunt you know hopefully my dog performs well and if he does yeah you know we hope for the best and yeah and that's where you one thing you mentioned you're, you're talking about playing sports basketball all that stuff you don't just go to school and and jump in the game and you're playing you practice yeah mm-hmm. same thing is true you're talking about practicing with your dogs hunting during the week yeah. You gotta you gotta get to know your dogs. All that stuff and is a big part of it. And his concept of the rules helps his nerves. Yeah, his yeah. knowledge of the rules, and that's where any young kid is pick up that rule book and read it yeah. and read it and read it and yeah. and learn out and look at how it's applied in the hunts and that kind of stuff and yeah. look, look what's right, what's wrong, and uh, do that, and you'll be fine. But the they and probably uh, probably another thing for for kids some good advice for young kids just to practice have some little practice hunts with yep, your buddy that's, scorecard that's that's run the way card. that's the way I've learned most of the rules all my life I remember when Roy had that crack <laughs> dog and Hachi we used to my dad would grab a scorecard and we'd go out and turn three or four dogs loose and yeah, yep. it felt like the world hunt finals out there but the oh, whole yeah. way but the whole way along you know I was I learning think the little rules scorecard might still be in his bedroom with us probably pra- practice hunts right now. but the thing of it is he kept the card he wrote down you know yeah. learning that you know I, I that's a huge one but yeah that was a that might that might have been your first big win right there, even though Probably. I would have protested that cast for sure. But yeah. Yeah. So Brock, have you judged much yet? Not a lot. Uh, you know, when they really need somebody, I'll go do it. You know, I don't mind it. Uh, I'm confident enough that I know the rules and everything to do it. But yeah. uh I have a little bit, not a lot. Yeah. I remember at nationals we were sitting there and uh nobody the judge was mixed up in our in our cast. He had two dogs and two casts and I remember you gave us the card and we gave me the card and we went out there and had a great yeah. time, you know. Yeah. So I don't mind it. I don't either way is fine with me, you know. That's I always like to judge too, but uh Yeah. Hey, that's a that's that's big. You're gonna be one of the, you're gonna be one of those guys, you know, here here before long that you're probably always gonna have the card a lot of times, you know? So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's good. Um would you as far as other for other kids, would you tell them are the rules hard to learn or I don't, if you are around it enough and, you know, get talking about it enough, I don't think they're that hard to learn. I mean, there's the little stuff that, you know, split tracks and, you know, that stuff is harder to learn than others. But like I said, just grabbing that scorecard and going out with somebody like Roy or, you know, your dad, your mom, whoever, and just going out and learning the little things. And if you got a question, ask it. I remember Roy probably remembers it like it was yesterday. That's probably why he's got a few gray hairs now. Is all the all the questions I used to ask him, you know, when well, he I was, wears a hat all the time. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. have There's anything underneath there. for that. Yeah, that was probably you me don't asking see Roy without a hat. Him. That was probably me asking him a hundred questions a day, you know, just yeah. about the rules and how everything went down. Yeah, it's yeah. funny you bring that up because that's when you realize that a kid is bit by yeah. this, you know. And I think I've told you that. Would laugh well, they laugh about. 
<laughs> Gingrich, this kid is wearing me out. You can't, you can't ask this man, but his 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 demand to want to learn it, yeah. and not only be learn it, he want to be good at it. Yeah. You know, and that's the and and I just commend any kid, and that's what you know. I look Coy Jarrett. You know, Coy Jarrett's one of the most soft spoken. You about got to spear him to get him to say anything. But Coy, same way in that area and this kind of stuff. It's just. You know, that, that just makes you smile. You know, from where I'm at that started it, that today, uh, and it's just great to see that. So, Brock, you have been at most all of the all of the major events yep. and a whole lot of club hunts all over the country, man, and probably a lot of states. You've been in all the states where we have hunting beagle events, I would guess. But uh, what is one of your favorite events? Uh I mean, have it's the obvious answer. I like the world hunting nationals the most just because, you know, it's the biggest stage and the, some of the people you see at the clubhouse, I know you guys are picking on me, but five, six years ago, my day, uh, you know, some of the people, <laughs> old days. You know, the old, old days. days for me, uh, <laughs> you see, you know, you get to see almost everybody yeah. at them hunts, not just, you know, your local hunts, you see the same people, but then you get to meet, you know, other good people in the sport and see some people you don't see every day. Yeah. Hey, we've talked about you learned a lot from your dad. You, I know you've learned a lot from Roy. He's taught you about, well, who are some other folks that you would, that you have learned things from? You know, we could make a whole two hour segment, you know, going through everybody, but there's, there's a lot of them. Jeff Davis has helped me a lot along the way. Alan Newby, Kevin Weaver, uh, obviously my dad, Roy, Matt Turner, there, there's a boatload of them. Jay yeah. Moore, you know, they've all taught me a lot along the way and yeah. every little cast you know there for a while i was learning something new and yeah. you know it took a nice guy in the cast to you know let me know how everything went down yeah. how many stuff like that. how many casts do you think you might have hunted in so far I did you ever did you ever try to count or keep track no I, i'd say i've probably in a hundred a year so if i've been doing it five years now probably 500 or more wow, just a rough pretty, estimate yeah it's, yeah, so you've seen a lot of situations, probably. Yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of different situations. Uh, what would you say has been your best win or your best accomplishment so far? Um, one of the, the funner ones, uh, that ranger dog I was talking about a little bit, he took second in the champion division at nationals, not this past year, but the year before that. Uh, we had two dogs in the top 16 this year in the grands and one in the champions. That was pretty neat. Uh them are probably the two that stick out the most just because, you know, it was the top 16 this year at the Nationals. The two dogs uh, that we had in the grand finals were kind of the two that really got me into it, the tank yeah. and ranger dog, you know. Yeah. So it was good to see them both in the top 16. And then taking second in the champion division last year was probably my overall favorite semifinal cast for sure. Cause it, it was one of them back and forth. I was down five and got a check right at the end to yeah. put me up 15. and yeah. It was a, it was a good one. What would you say are some of the toughest dogs that you're competing against out there? Right There's now? a lot of them. Uh, this year, I haven't hunted with uh, the heat 'em up dogs a lot. You know, Josh Ware, Mitch Gould, Cody Rucker, Braden Kidd, Braden Neely, all them guys. But you know, you can't look past what they've done this year. You know, they got almost 30 NHBA points and 15, 16 cast wins already. You know, they're having a great year. Uh, the Mongo dog. He's won a lot. Uh, Bill, Jason Vandergriff, they do, they've done a lot of winning the past three, four years. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Davis, he's always up there. You know, he won the Grand Division at Nationals this year. Won Nationals, yep, with yep. Shine. Uh, Trevor, Tracy McQuain, that group, they've always got a nice dog. You know, they last year they had first and second in the NHBA mm -hmm. points. And so there's a lot of them out there that got good dogs. Uh, yeah. You know, one thing I didn't ask you, kind of forgot, you mentioned uh, puppies, raising puppies. Do you like to work with young pups, too, and get them going? Yeah, my dad likes it a lot more than me and Roy do. Uh, <laughs> me, me and Roy like to take over when they're about a year old where we can just flip them loose wherever. Right boy. They're going to go jump us around. <laughs> That's but my boy. I don't mind. You know, we got them pine trees like I was talking right behind my house, and you'll see if we'll go out there with the coon lights at night, and there'll be a few sitting on the trail and watching the puppies develop and mature, you know, it. It's good to see you. Sure. I like it. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about your ambitions, your aspirations. What goals do you have? you have any goals set? They're not really. <laughs> I'd just... like to uh, 
this year I'd like to take the top eight in the NHBA points for the for the dog wise, and of course win the first. You're strike talking about the all age handlers, and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the Ranger dog took seventh last year, and it'd be I think neat to get him in the top eight again this year. Uh, I'd like to be the Roy that wins nationals in the world one day, but you know that could yeah. be a while down the road. But doesn't you know, come easy. No, doesn't come easy. It'll take. They're not gimmies. No, That's no. Tough. But it's just one of them deals we had. That tank dog there, not to get rambling, but at uh, the Nationals this year in the Clash of Champions, you know, that dog two weeks before, you know, we didn't know what to think of him. He was looking terrible. And then we showed up to Nationals in the Clash of Champions, and he just, that weekend, he just clicked and he ended up taking third at the Clash and made the top 16. You know, he just looked great and had one of his one of yeah. his weekends, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, Roy kind of mentioned it. We could talk about this. There's, we could talk about this for hours here. We're not gonna. We, we can't right. take a whole lot of time here. But uh, man, uh, there's a lot of people that are proud of you, Brock, and everything that you've accomplished, and just the young man that you've become, and and being a good handler and a good dog man. I appreciate man. it. It's, it's took a lot of time, but uh, yeah. yeah, glad to be where I'm at, and hopefully keep stepping it up from this this point right here. Yeah, so. you're never too. You can always. You're always learning. Yep. Always learn learning. something new all the time. Absolutely. So yeah, Roy. Uh, one thing we didn't talk to you about: you had a stint here where you actually ran the Beagle program here at UKC. Yeah, I guess I guess I've kind of full circled this whole UKC Beagle program. Yeah, I've kind of had a hand a, in everything. Yeah, I've kind of had a hand in everything. Yeah, I mean, and uh, it it was a great you know the time I spent here. Great people here at UKC. I enjoyed it. Just. Just wasn't my my cup of tea to be in the office all day long as a personal thing, and like I say, we it just wasn't for me. But as far as being involvement in the program and stuff, I've still kept that up and same group of guys and that kind of stuff. But I yeah, I enjoyed working here. It was a yeah, I got to see firsthand, you know, kind of what you think on the outside. That, oh gosh, they're doing this is going well. You change your mind if you saw what happens internally, you yeah. know, and that and to have that knowledge and to be able to share that with some of the guys to stop them. Whoa, 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 you know, to get that shut off before it gets out of and they don't realize how it internally yeah. works, you know, to learn the more. I knew I had a good grasp on it, but I didn't until I came here and went to work. It was. Yeah, well, you've always been a people person, you know, and, and that's and, a fact. And, yeah, <laughs> and, <laughs> this kid's not far behind. Yeah. Me, let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I could tell you, you know, were talking about the West Virginia hunt. You know, you were the manager at that time when it went to the West Virginia yeah. World Hunt. You know, and and I'm kind of, you know, I get it. I've been up here for a little while, you know. But next thing I know, you know, I'm we're up there setting up and. There's Roy talking to people again, sitting at the table, you know. You know. There's Roy. Yeah. There's Roy. Yeah, that whole word hey, thing. Yeah, that, that, was, that was terrible. I think Taylor kept telling me that, too. About, you know, hey, you, you, know, you really have a job now. Taylor, come on. What I come mean? to these hunts to BS. I ain't got to work. <laughs> no, but you need that, and you had a good uh, – Oh, I had a great – you know, the the I've always had a lot of respect the, for you, Alan. You uh, you, uh, you do well, a great job with what you do, and uh, – and you surround yourself with good people, and that's where this format has that, you know. And and that's where it's that's where it's at, you yeah. know. For me, it's I love to compete. I still love to win, but to go to those big events, I I like to take my wife along now, yeah. and, and see the folks, and you know, the Stacys, the newbies, the Weavers, the Wilsons, the Mercers, or you know, all our, you know, yeah. every, it's just you can't. That's yeah. where it's at. It is, you know. Gosh, and they're just truly good people. It is. And, you know, you were, you did a whole lot with the kids, you know, we're kind of this, this podcast, we kind of focused on, on the, on our, on our youth programs and stuff. So I we wanted Brock to come on here and, and, uh, would, it just kind of works. He lives close by here. You oh, know, yeah. there's a lot of other kids that are working hard, just like Brock, especially, Plenty of them. you know, and, but, uh, it is just important that we keep these youth programs going. Oh, they are where it's at. We, it's, and the same, this business here, you know, with the field trials and stuff, we've got to keep the kids involved. And right now there is a good group of kids and they're good ambassadors of it too. They're, they're conducting themselves. Well, I took a picture this weekend of the kids we had there lined up and stuff and actually hunted, you know, with Izzy and Achilles and stuff. And man, the kids did a great job, you know, and and they're not little kids, but they're kids that know what's going on out there. And that's, you know, it's awesome to see yeah. really a big smile to see that, that, that they, you know, cause of all the things that kids can get involved in and kids can get a bad rap for all the stuff they can get involved in to see kids with dogs out there. That's a pretty good thing yeah. to see. 
And just like, you know, there's a lot of kids out there wanting to learn this and that, you know, and ask other kids that are doing it, you know, you mm -hmm. ask, ask questions. Brock, ask, ask questions, questions, ask some of these other kids, but yeah. Hey, we need to get this wrapped up, but Brock, you got anything you want to? Uh, just for everybody in the youth program, uh, like I said, don't be afraid to ask questions, you know, surround yourself with good people, know your dog, call your dog for what it does and, uh, everything will go well. Yeah. Roy? That's what he said. I, I like say, I, I didn't know, I agreed to this. I wanted to come up here when you, with a, because that's how important the kids are, the youth programs are. So that's just it. And clubs that are supporting, uh, I hats off to Alan Newby's club. I think down there, kids hunt free. They really promote kids involvement and that kind of stuff. So I totally enjoy that. Yeah. So that's it. So clubs reach out, get these kids involved and go from there. Hey, Roy, thanks for bringing Brock in. Thanks to both of you. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for enjoyed having us. Guys. I enjoyed thanks it. Thanks for having us. It was a blast. We appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and to like and follow UKC Hunting Ops on Facebook and Instagram.